Hey guys, welcome back to the Austin Lindsay channel. Today I'm in studio doing a product shoot for a soap chunk bar. So let me show you what I got going on. Okay, so this is our main setup. This is about the angle here that the camera is at. Um, I'm using this yellow piece of acrylic. Originally I'd like to have a larger one so that I can uh, have a lot more space to work with. But I have this one and then I have the bars leaning back there just on a couple of little wooden blocks uh, with butyl stuck to it. So I have this light here shining on the back wall. What that will do, once you get to the right camera angle, you can see that it creates this nice little gradient behind the products. And then I have standard reflector, the five in one reflectors, which I'm using as diffusers. Uh, and then I have a light above that. And that is kind of creating an overall top light, just kind of lighting, making the yellow a little bit more bright. And then over here on the side, I have this light here shining against the wall. I have it really close to the wall, so you can see a small spot right here, very small gradient. So what that's doing is it's kind of feathering light onto this side since the package is kind of angling this side and it's lighting up the uh, kind of the front of the package. And then as per usual, I'm using mirrors for little spotlights. So what I'm actually doing is taking reflection directly from the bulb. What you can see right here, you can see things just kind of shining around. So I'm using these again to light up specific areas of the packaging that I want to highlight. I'm using a Nikon D610. I have a 105 millimeter macro on this thing. And then as usual, the lens and the uh, camera body don't matter so much as long as you can get uh, this same type of angle in your working environment, then you're good. You just want to make sure you do use a good quality lens. I'm using this one because you can stop all the way down to f22 on it, and I have it around f13 or 14, and it uh, just kind of hits that good sweet spot in the middle. So uh, and that way I can get um, good depth of field on the packaging and the bar itself. So here's the computer screen. This is kind of our main shot. And you can see right here where I'm using the mirror to light up just specific areas of the packaging. I'm probably not gonna use these particular images because uh, I don't like the super hard highlights, but I just play around with a little bit until I get the shot that I like. This is probably the one I'm gonna go with. And then I'm gonna probably do some dodging and burning, bring out kind of the label just a little bit more. All right, guys, I'm just gonna talk through a little bit of this retouching and uh, kind of explain as I go. So right now I have it in Lightroom. What I've done really quick is done lens corrections and I've made sure the exposure looks pretty good. We'll go over here to the original. So it's just a little bit dark and uh, I changed the angle just a little bit. So, and then I brightened it up a little bit. And then what I do is push Command E and then I take it into Photoshop. And basically once it's here in Photoshop, I duplicate the layer and then what I want to do is extend the background here all the way. And then what I need to do also is extend the left side of the image. They're going to do a couple crops of it. And uh, one of them will be a really wide, thin crop. So I need to extend this out to the left. So I'm going to use my clone stamp tool here and just take a sample from this area and basically just paint in this area. I'm using, I want to use a really soft brush so the edges blend really well. I'm um, only on 80%, let me go to 100% opacity. I'll try to sample near areas where uh, I'm going to need a clone to, so that way it looks more natural. You can see a slight gradient from the light over here, so I'm just going to sample these dark areas. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the sample area and then overlap it with the brush size. As you can see here, the plus is in the middle of that circle. That way it kind of blends it a little bit more. It just creates this really soft blending. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna hit the C key and then go into my cropping. I'm gonna clear this out and just make this 
the original ratio and then I'm going to pull this thing over quite a bit. That looks fine. And then what I'm going to do is grab over here. Oops, I don't want the circle. I want the marquee in a square. I'm going to try and not get, you can see the start of this gradient right here. I'm going to try and not get that if I can. Push Command J, Command T to bring up. So Command J duplicates that layer. Command T brings up this uh, transform box. I'm going to hold down Shift just so the one side comes along. And that's looking pretty good. And I got these little areas up top here and on bottom. So I'm going to hold Shift, pull those out just a little bit. Hit Enter. And there you go. If you zoom in on some of these things, this one's not too bad because there's not a lot of texture. It's just uh, acrylic. Sometimes when you zoom on this, you see a little bit of stretched pixels. And what you can do sometimes is add a little bit of noise. This one actually worked out really well for the stretching. So I'm actually gonna merge this one down real quick. I know it's destructive, but I do have the original layer that I can work off of. So what I'm gonna do is start on my uh, spot healing. So I want to get rid of this little thing. There's not really a whole lot on here. The uh, acrylic had quite a few scratches on it, but it doesn't show up as much as I thought it would, or even at all in Photoshop. So that's kind of nice. That looks pretty good all around the border for dust and things. The camera has quite a bit of dust on it, but Luckily, it's not showing up that much here. So now I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to duplicate this layer just in case I don't like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and smooth out this little smushy area. I'm going to hit uh, Command Shift X and bring me into Liquify. So I'm just going to pull this edge out. So what I'm doing here is basically pushing from the inside. Because what that's going to do is bunch up these red pixels or these brownish pixels against each other. Because if I start dragging from the outside, you can see how this starts to get um, kind of feathered and blurry. So if you push, if I push from the inside here, uh, I'll create that sharp edge. Same thing if I wanted to bring it back down, I'm going to push against the outside and bring it back down. So you'll get some blurring on these pixels here on the inside of the chunk but it doesn't bother me too much because what I'm going to do is go and retouch these areas. So I'll be adding in some texture and covering up those blurred stretched pixels. That's looking pretty good on the chunk bar. What I'm going to do is look around and see what other areas needed to be uh, fixed up a little bit. Just kind of round it off, make everything look a little bit more professional. So I'm going to take this whole corner and I'm going to smush it down a little bit. So that way you kind of have a little bit of a straighter edge and not so much of an angle. So one thing to mention is I always do my liquify first because of this kind of blurred pixel effect you get sometimes when you're pushing and pulling pixels all around. Um, so I do it first because then I can go back and do the retouching, whether it be on skin or product. Uh, and then I can sample pixels from these other areas that haven't been blurred or stretched and overlay them onto the areas that have. So that's why I do my liquify as early on as I can. And that looks good to me. So. I try to work non-destructively, but uh, I also do some destructive edits because it depends on um, the image and what I know I'm going to need from it later. And this is a very short living image, kind of a simple thing. So I won't need to come in and change a lot. So what I'm going to do is uh, merge this one down, call it good. Like I said, I still have this original layer that I can always revert back to if I do need to. But now I'm going to duplicate this layer again. And this is where I'm going to go in and do the uh, cleanup, like the cloning and uh, uh, spot healing and all that. So when I do my healing, it's the J key on the keyboard. It's over here. And um, what I do is it's the one that samples an area. 
And then I right click, bring up this dialog box and I uh, bring the heart, well the hardness can stay whatever, but I bring the uh, angle to about 60 degrees and I bring the roundness to about 60 degrees. Um, I found that that just kind of samples it a little bit better. I've been doing it for years. Uh, I've really just liked the look, how it brings everything together. And so that's just kind of one little trick that I do. On random places like this, what I'll do is make the brush really small. I'll kind of sample areas near it and then just scribble basically all over. So when I'm using a Wacom tablet, which helps things for me go a lot smoother, uh, especially in areas like this where I can scribble. And basically what I'm doing is I scribble on a paper, but I can lift my hand up and set it back down on the tablet really quickly, much faster than I would be able to uh, do with a finger pressing the mouse button. So and what this does is it just kind of scatters the texture all about and to me keeps it looking pretty natural. Right on some of these smaller spots, what I'll do is use the uh, stamp tool that doesn't require you to select a source. And I feel like Photoshop can just quickly do a better job than, well, a quicker job than I would do if I had to take the time and find the perfect clone or source area and then line it all up. It just makes it go a lot faster if I can just let Photoshop do all the mathematics and all that stuff for me. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go in and clean up a little bit more things in a minute, but that looks good compared to what it was. And to be honest, a lot of this tiny nitpicky detail is somewhat for me. I like to have it looking as good as possible. Uh, there, no one's gonna be zooming in this close. Uh, to the packaging. You say it's not going on a billboard. It's not uh, being uh, posted at high resolution on websites or social media. So a lot of this stuff is just so I can say that I did as good a job as I can and made it look as good as I could. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, let me get this little piece down here because it's gonna bother me for no real reason. A uh, good thing to know is if you do something on the product and you have a reflection in the shot, you wanna make sure you mimic that same retouching on the reflection. So now what I'm gonna do is push Command Shift N, create a new layer. This is gonna be some kind of dodging and burning in the sense. Um, you can name it if you want. I'll just put DNB real quick. Go into Soft Light, hit OK, select your brush, and then uh, set it to black and white. And then what you want is a really light opacity, like three, four percent. And for me, if I hit zero three on the number pad really quickly, it'll go to three. If I just push the one button, it'll go to 10, five button, go to 50, all along those ways. So then what I'm gonna do is make any light parts that look lighter than the main area. I'm gonna paint those in with black. A very 
low opacity. Same thing, you can paint the dark spots with white. Bring those up. I might even go to 2%. And then just keep switching back and forth. X will switch you back and forth between colors. And then you keep painting black on the lighter areas, white on the darker areas. And then you'll try and just blend everything to be kind of one, one color tone. We'll do a before and after real quick. We'll go up here and do a before and after. You can see it just kind of blends everything a little bit better. There's one spot up here. I wanted to kind of blend up a little bit. Make it look like there wasn't such a hard edge. And you see the before and after on this one takes that edge away just a little bit. And I think for the way that this image will be used, I think that's looking pretty good. Hopefully that was interesting, entertaining. If you guys do have any questions, leave them in the comments field. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks everyone for watching.